Recently, CEM announced that ENMA 2020 will be held around second week to third week of August for those people who were not able to take it last March. Leaving you with just a month to prepare, this video will give you a detailed step-by-step -step run through on the things I did to prepare for NMOT and a study plan good for one month, maximizing your whole NMOT preparation. If we haven't met yet, my name is Grace Nariza. I'm a first-year medicine student in Cebu, Philippines. Without further ado, let's get you to the 99th percentile. To the 99! 99! <laughs> If there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that I believe in the Pareto Principle or the 80-20 rule, wherein it states that you master 20% of the input or the concept, and with that 20%, you get to the 80% of the output. In short, I prefer to work smart. Sabi nga nila, you don't have to be intense, you just have to be consistent. If I would define NMAT, it's basically a test on one, how efficient you are in studying very different subjects, and two, how good is your testmanship skills, your time management, critical thinking, and your ability to eliminate the choices that are not relevant to the actual answer. The National Medical Admissions Test, or NMAT, is very well discussed and thoroughly described in the website. Filipino, which will be linked down below. I would not get into detail the things that you will read later on, but you have to read them. They are part of the references that I based on in my preparation during Enma. The first four steps that I will be mentioning in this video can be done within one day, but the benefit of doing these steps will last you the whole month of your preparation. Step one, commitment. Now you have to be honest with yourself. Do you really not want to prepare for Enma? get a low percentile score, and then you'll say, I di kasi ako nag -arali. No, you don't want that. Nagbayad ka na, nagpunta ka na sa testing center. Kumbaga, andyan ka ni. Make the most out of it and just set your goal. Papasok ako sa med school na to, kukunin ko tong NMAT score na to, I will do this. This commitment step will help you avoid slacking off or losing the drive throughout the whole month. Kasi inalam mo, umpisa pa lang, Ito yung ginusto ko. Period. Step 2. Self-assessment. So before studying, know your strengths and weaknesses. For example, ako, pre-med ko is pharmacy. So in myself, I know that I'm comfortable with concepts of chemistry or maybe familiar ako with biology. Alam ko weakness ko, physics, math. Let's say you went to a not sci high school, maybe your math and physics foundation is better. Maybe non-medical yung pre-med mo. If you're BS communication, then verbal reasoning and reading comprehension is where you shine. So know your strengths and weaknesses. Step three, reach out to people on the same page. I think one of the reasons why I got a good NMAT score was one of my friends suggested, Hi Ivan, that I joined the National Medical Admissions Task and Not Philippines Facebook group. And in there, there's this whole community just helping each other out which I think is healthy throughout your one month preparation kasi you, you see people working the same common goal, getting into med school, getting into your dream school. Step four, decide on and organize your study materials. After joining the Facebook group, there's a chance you get bombarded with various links, reviewers, study materials, tips, and this may seem overwhelming. So day one pa lang, decide ka na, ito na, ah, kukunin ko tong link na to, ah, kukunin ko tong link na to, ah, andito yung content na to list down or compile the things that you promise and definitely must stick to the whole one month. Kung natapos mo na siya, tsaka ka na mag-consider magdagdag pa ng study materials. Step 5. Your actual personal study plan. I've said earlier in this video that NMAT is somewhat a measure of your test-taking skills. So for me, part 1 is all about practice, 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 practice because if you don't practice, you really run out of time. And for part two, I listed it down from my strengths to weaknesses, what we did kanina. And then I scheduled my weaknesses first so that I could internalize them. And not the timing din na, your weaknesses most likely would be the concept-heavy subjects, chemistry, physics. So inuuna ko muna yun, tapos nilalagyan ko sila ng extra hours. And then, later on, yung mga term-heavy subjects. Yung parang concept-concept lang, pwede mo i-relate sa life, social sciences, and biology. So, sila yung mga malapit na sa deadline na dates ko. 
I have three general rules in making the schedule. My mornings are for part one, my afternoons or evenings, depende sa schedule or sa mood ko that day, are for part two, except on Sundays. Two, I have to get at least five hours of me time a day. If I've decided to study sa morning and sa afternoon, I have to make sure na pagpatak ng 6 or 7 p.m., wala na ako inaaral. I can watch whatever I wanna watch, I can relax, and just rest for the next day. And lastly, I get one whole day off per week for the errands or events. So here's my schedule. Feel free to grab it and tweak it to your personal preferences. So let's see here. For week one, your day one of actual studying is you'll be taking the practice test without preparation and just check for yourself. If you're wondering, answer key for the CEM test is linked down below in the description box. That's 2019 version. Thanks to Ms. Nicole, Nicanor, and her team. Now, the results of this day one is now your benchmark on how you would have done with minimal to no effort. Let's go to the rest of week one. I had verbal first. Inuna ko muna siya kasi ayoko mabiglihan ng kakasimula pa lang heavy na running ko. Because I paired it with physics. You'd see here that I allotted my Saturday for physics kasi medyo familiar na yung verbal by five, 4 to 5 days. I'm not sure where I've read this but it mentioned that it pays if you pay attention or give extra hours to subjects where many people are not good at. So these subjects are usually physics, quantitative, and chemistry. We'll get to that later in my end results, how it affected or kung nagbunga ba talaga yung extra hours ko for those subjects. For week two, I scheduled inductive reasoning and chemistry, and then you'll see the overtime for chemistry sa Saturday. For week three, it's perceptive equity and biology. For week four, it's quantitative and social sciences. The week before and not, I allotted it now for subjects which I think people would, would find more challenging. That would be quantitative, chemistry, and physics. And then the few remaining days before Anmat, here are the things that you could do. Kasi alam kung even if I tell you to rest and relax, you're gonna cram. So cram wisely. Retake the CEM practice test and then now you could say, oh yeah, I did do better. Then do go over Kaplan M MCAT quick sheets, link down below. Three, memorize must know formula. Four, hope for the best and God bless. Everything that I have mentioned and have used during the Anmat preparation has been linked down below. Following my one month plan for Anmat, you would see here my results. From this, I'd like you to appreciate how I myself am not good with physics or quantitative, but giving those extra hours to those difficult subjects actually made the difference and pulled my percentile really high. I also drew a mask on my face as a simple reminder to wear a mask when you leave the house. Don't forget to wash your hands and stay safe. And that concludes my one month preparation for NMAT, including the results. I hope you find this video really helpful and I genuinely hope that you get that 99th percentile very soon. If you have more questions or you have confusion regarding this video or during NMAT season, feel free to just message me on FB, Instagram, or even in the comment section below. I will try my best to return to you as soon as possible. Until then, see you in the next vid, mga dog. Okay, 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 okay with me. To the nine nine. Nine nine. nine.